Hi, welcome back to Educator.com. This is the lesson on the digestive system. Functions of the digestive system include ingestion, the act of physically putting food into your mouth, that's ingesting. Mechanical breakdown starts in the mouth, that's with the teeth, with the tongue. When you swallow food, your stomach does mechanical digestion, that's any time you're ripping, tearing, crushing food. So that's the physical breakdown. Digestion itself, if we look at like what causes digestion to occur, mechanical breakdown does assist with it, but on a microscopic level, it's the chemical breakdown that, that really gets it done. That's enzymes, acids, all those molecules that, that physically break down macromolecules, larger molecules, into the tinier ones that you can absorb into the bloodstream and actually provide your body nourishment. Secretion. Throughout parts of your digestive tract, all the way up in the mouth with saliva, all the way down to uh, the large intestine, you are secreting items. Um, glands are, are physically releasing substances, uh, fluids, enzymes, other molecules into your digestive tract uh, to assist with the breakdown and movement of this food through there. Absorption, the opposite of secretion. You're physically absorbing uh, those, nur those nourishing molecules, those nutrients into your bloodstream so that you can stay alive. And excretion, uh, that's releasing waste out the exit hole. The alimentary canal is a fancy way of saying your digestive tract or your GI tract, gastrointestinal tract. So either of these terms or digestive tract is acceptable. And we look at this tube from the mouth all the way to the end, all of these are connected to each other. Um, some parts of it are a little expanded or twisty turny or really long, but all of these are in sequence. Later on, I'll cover the accessory organs that are off to the side of the tract, like the liver and the pancreas. So, of course, it starts with the mouth, you swallow food, it goes down the pharynx, right in here, and then into the esophagus. If it goes down into the larynx trachea, you have a problem, and you could be choking or aspirating, and then that's no good. Um, once food and liquids go down the esophagus, they enter the stomach. From the stomach, we go through the small intestine, um, the longest portion, uh, percentage-wise, of the GI tract, then the large intestine which is large in terms of width, not length, uh, which is right here. Uh, most of it is known as the colon. And then you get into the rectum and the anus. So we're going to start with the oral cavity, the mouth. The, the starting of the uh, chemical digestion of food is definitely due to salivary glands. Um, even just seeing food on television or seeing a picture of food, smelling food, is going to initiate salivation. And you have three pairs of salivary glands for a total of six. The parotid glands are in this region, um, in, in the kind of sides of the cheeks. The sublingual, that literally means under the tongue. Um, we see those, uh, some people can lift up their tongue and you can see these little holes and they, and they squirt like little hoses. Those are the sublingual under the tongue salivary glands and then submandibular, which are, uh, deeper, uh, and associated more with the mandible. There's this mandibular groove, uh, that's next to the back of the teeth where, um, these particular salivary glands are rooted. And actually the majority of saliva comes from the submandibular glands and the rest of it, uh, from the parotid and sublingual. So of course salivary glands release saliva. So what's in saliva? Well, the vast majority of it is water, but what's the other 0.6%? You're looking at enzymes, um, antibodies, even uh, white blood cells on occasion. Um, but the enzymes are really what we're going to focus on. Amylase, salivary amylase is what we would call it, is one of the main ones. That breaks down larger carbohydrates in the tinier ones, like glucose, uh, galactose, those monosaccharides. Lysozyme is an enzyme that actually helps keep the bacterial populations in your mouth at acceptable levels. Everyone has bacteria in their mouth, uh, even, you know, using a really good mouthwash you're not going to get rid of all of them. It's important to have uh, some bacteria in your mouth. That's that's normal, but you don't want them to get out of control. Um, out of control bacteria is going to lead to infections like gingivitis, uh, tooth decay, uh, periodontal disease, things like that. So lysosome, or sorry, 
I, I misspoke, lysozyme uh, is an enzyme that helps keep that bacterial population in check. Your tongue has a lot to do with, of course, um, getting the food swallowed and to help break it down. Um, as you chew, your tongue is, is a very strong set of muscles uh, that work together. Um, and, and I mean, over time, your tongue is so, so strong that you can actually end up moving your teeth in the long run if your tongue keeps pushing on them. Uh, yes, the teeth have a lot to do with mechanical digestion, uh, the physical breaking down of food products. Teeth are not technically bones. Their structure is a bit different than the bones of the body. I'm going to cover that in the next slide. And then last, the hard palate and soft palate. In this particular image, uh, this, this sagittal cross section straight through here, uh, there's a little bit of German in this image, but um, here's the hard palate right here. Uh, that's um, A lot of it is actually uh, the maxillary bones and the palatine bones. And then if you go posterior to there, you've got the soft palate or that, that uvula hangs, that thing that looks like a little punching bag in the back of your mouth. Um, the soft palate has a lot to do with uh, swallowing, which we're going to get to in a bit.